What is up guys, I'm back with another video and today I'm going to be going over kind of how StockX works. Uh, in all my resale prediction videos, I always use StockX as my reference to, you know, uh, predict a resale. Um, but I never really showed you guys how it works and how StockX operates. Um, I figured some of you guys might want to know. Um, StockX isn't always the best option to sell your sneakers. Um, there are other options mainly because StockX takes a pretty steep cut because they are liable and pretty known so they can kind of have that leverage on other companies so um yeah let's not waste any time let's get into it so StockX is a marketplace for resellers um it's a live bid ask market and i'll and i'll get into that uh, a little bit later uh StockX covers sneakers streetwear collectibles handbags and watches uh, i mainly do sneakers with um some street uh, streetwear on the side and every now and again handbags like supreme backpack might have resell um i'll go for that as well but uh, we'll get into the cuts later. I'll, so if you want to get more serious about reselling, um, you want to know all the newest releases coming out instead of spending money being a cook group, you can actually check it right here on StockX. So if we go to news, for example, and we can go to sneakers, we can go to the drop list. So it's this week's hottest release. So this is the drop list um, starting July 6th and actually ending uh, today. So this is everything that dropped this week. We started off with the Jordan 5 grapes, and then we have... Uh, these Nike ISPA overreacts. Um, also, we have the Jordan 11s, the Jordan 1s, the Yeezys, and those were the top releases of this week, and they're all right here. So, tomorrow they will update it with everything that's going to be releasing. So, you can just take a quick glance at this. Obviously, they're not going to predict a resale for you, but you will know what items are coming out. Um, there's a streetwear option, there's a sneaker option, so you can definitely stay in the loop, and then you can. Um, look at that shoe, go on YouTube, find a video, or come to my videos. I'm always going to be going over the resale predictions for the most hype sneakers. StockX is really reliable for buying sneakers because you don't have to worry about the fake. Now, for StockX, there is a middleman, which is the warehouse. Um, so when you sell a sneaker, you ship it off. They send you a shipping label uh, for free, and you send it to their warehouse, and they'll look it over. They'll authenticate it. If it's dead stock and ready to go and it's a real shoe, um, as soon as they authenticate it, they will put the money in your PayPal and you'll be all good to go and then they'll ship it to the customer. It is off your hands. Now because of that, they take a fee and we'll get into the seller's fee. Alright, so here we have your profile. As you can see, I am level 2 and I'm getting to level 3. Um, so when you start, make a brand new account, StockX will take a 9.5% um, seller's fee. So that's kind of their fee for the shipping because they do include shipping. Free shipping almost, but they do take a cut out, which I'm sure that covers the shipping. So you start with a 9.5% and there's also a 3% uh, payment fee. That will never change. That will always be 3%. So right out of the gate, you sell a sneaker and they're going to take 12.5% of the entire sale, which is a pretty steep price. Um, that's why in my other videos, I tell you either to you can sell on StockX to still make money or I'll leave it for Facebook Marketplace or eBay, which has a 0% seller's fee. Um, so if you make three sales, it will go down to 9%. Um, if you make 30 sales, it will go down to 8.5%. Um, or if you reach $10,000 before 30 sales, which is pretty difficult once you get some real high items. Um, and then, uh, then for level four is 100 sales or $25,000 sold, and that's 8%. So if you are always selling a stock if you take reselling really seriously the lowest you can go um for cuts is 11 percent so um yeah so there's that and um now i'm going to get into kind of like the ask and bid war of, uh, of stock x so here we are i have the jordan 5 grape uh pulled up i actually got a pair of these the other day so the perfect sneaker to use for an example so we have the lowest ask and the highest bid. So the lowest ask is someone who has the sneaker and not so much they're willing to sell it for. Now the highest bid is someone looking to buy the sneaker, um, but that's how much they're willing to pay for. So I have a size nine. So the lowest ask is 243. So out of everybody who owns a sneaker, that's the guy who's gonna dip the lowest. And then the highest bid is whoever's looking for a size nine to own, uh, that's how much they're willing to pay. So. Um, for example, if they kind of want to meet in between, it's not like personal, like they don't know each other, they don't contact each other at all. Um, but you can kind of send a message, we're $6 difference, I'll go down to 240 and then maybe the guy with the highest bid 
will accept it or he'll try to move his highest bid up to up to 239 and then the guy's lowest bid will accept it or just uh, say the same so it's kind of like a cold war for a minute until um everybody is happy with the price so if i were to sell these right now for the highest bid which i would never recommend doing i would never recommend is click on the highest bid and selling it i would always try to raise it up at least a couple bucks um for this sneaker with it with it only being like 240 250 uh, the margin between the highest bid and the lowest ask isn't going to be um, that far. So if I were to sell the sneaker right now to the person with the highest bid, they would take just under $30 out and my total would be two hundred eight fifty six. Now I bought this sneaker for one ninety, so my profit would be $18.56. That's not really like that good when it comes to putting in that much money for, uh, for a sneaker. So I would recommend selling this sneaker on eBay, which I'm going to do because I'm not happy with that profit margin. I normally try to reach at least $25 per sneaker. So I'll try to fiddle with it and try to sell off StockX. Now StockX is the easiest way to sell a sneaker. There's no pictures to be uploaded. If it's a brand new sneaker and it's real, you shouldn't have a problem with it. Um, they will take it and they will send it off. So if you are looking to um, dig into the pockets of the highest bid a little more, as, you can, as I explained before, um, there's six dollar difference between the lowest ask and the highest bid. So if I were, for example, going to meet them in the middle, I would type in 240 here. And if I um, submitted this ask, I would have the lowest ask, and then I'd have to wait for someone to undercut me or for the highest bidder to bite the bullet and move up a couple of dollars and buy it. So then my profit margin would be over the twenty dollar mark, but still not quite where I want to get it. And I know this sneaker is pretty popular, as we can tell. Um, if we go down here, there's uh, 731 sales which is pretty good that's pretty good for a sneaker that just came out um, so I feel like I'll have no problem moving this on eBay with that 0% sellers fee um, and a 25% um, profit over the retail is not bad at all but I do look for a 30 to 35 so sneakers like almost there for me uh, but not quite um, so yeah, that's basically about it. Um, that's the breakdown of StockX, and I hope you guys enjoyed. And if there's anything that I left out that you want to ask a question, feel free to comment it down below, and uh, I'll get to it right away. And I'll see you guys in the next one.